Oh, hey, Mark. What did we just hear? <laughs> just a loud rumbling thunder. Nothing, <laughs> nothing big. It's, it's exactly what you want to hear when you need to walk in a river. Well, we made it to the river. Got my nice pretty ballet shoes on. Mark's got his on. Oh, now we're going to hike the river. We're going to hike it all the way down until we find a good spot. Man, it is humid out here and it's thundering. A big thunderhead coming up right over there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but yeah, it's rolling in. Whew. We got to find our place. We got to find it soon if we want to um, have any comfort for the night, Mark. You know, we're going to be sleeping with our boots as our pillow. <laughs> Done that. It's actually not that bad. Yeah, well, okay. Yeah. Wow. Oh, there you go. Like a train. Yeah. Okay, so we're still marching. We got a bit to go yet. Very, very slow. The rocks are all covered in slime. Makes it very slippery. Don't spill that coffee, Mark. No guarantees. <laughs> okay, Mark's walking through a weed bed. So, uh, just some mint on the way. Well, we made a quick stop to move uh, Dan's blanket to the top of his backpack so it didn't get wet-er. <laughs> and so we just found this. It's not water mint, I don't believe. It's not really as red as I'd expect it to be for water mint, but it definitely smells really good and uh, it should be great in our water. So you can take a piece of that mint and you chew on it and it's like chewing on a, a piece of gum really just with like kind of a leafy flavor. Mm, very nice. Put that in water and Mark boils it up and makes a really good tea out of it. We're going to be oh. doing that a little bit later. Well we're almost at her spot thank god. That's where we got to go. Around the bend. Ah, oh it's picky. <laughs> What is that? Stinging that old stuff. Yep. Check this out. We got some fuel. So we're just going to put that on and get our fire going and save us a lot of time. Uh, and we even found a lighter. Too. Maybe. Do we have something to sort of direct it in? <laughs> Use it sparingly? Because <laughs> we are inside a shelter. And there's that lighter we found right there. In the dirt. There you go. Yes. This is my job. Yes. Okay. okay. All right. You might want to sit back for this one. All right, Gerber. This stuff smells like it smells like model glue. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fire's going. Good job, Mark. Fire's going. It was hard. Mark's making fun of me about my gear I brought. <laughs> he says he's going to be eating a four-pound bass, and I'm going to eat, be eating a pepperette. <laughs> we'll see. We will see. Yeah. Dan, you're gonna starve. Yeah. Um, so this shelter, man, is warm. It's really warm. It is really warm under here. Seriously, what a find. It's like being spoiled. And I almost feel like it's cheating. Well, you know, I brought more gear than three people, four people, even a family would need. And whatever, man. It's it's good. We'll do a we'll do an adventure one time when we only bring you know, I was just gonna three, say, four items. I was just going to say, just a family? I should have brought my dog, too. Yeah. Yeah, you probably have dog food in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't really see us. It's morning, 6.30, and it's raining. Coming down. Putting our fire up. It's actually starting to slow down. It, it just started coming down in buckets. <laughs> 
It was pretty intense. Lightning flashing, thunder crashing. Oh, we got water seeping up. Our fire's almost out. That's what we got. So, you said you wanted to rough it. We're definitely roughing it. Oh yeah. It's nice to have a, like a little curveball thrown to you, like the weather, and you know, change things up, make things a little bit more difficult. The plan was to fish this morning. <laughs> That's not happening. So, what are you gonna eat today? Nothing. <laughs> uh, okay. So far. So far. We're just gonna wait this out. It's supposed to clear up at what ten? And uh, then start again. Yeah, Nine o'clock, and then it's supposed to like give an hour break, and then start again at ten. Oh, okay. So we got an hour break yeah, I think it from goes this. Till a little afternoon. Oh, there's lightning. Let's see if we can catch it. It's gonna be a loud one. It's actually past us now, so. There it is. Still <laughs> Where you go, Mark? Well, I was trying to think of a way, because it's getting kind of murky out in the water. And I don't think they're going to find anything like maybe natural kicking around or anything dark and murky. So I was thinking about turning a piece of this paracord, which I actually will showcase later. It's pretty interesting stuff. Uh, I'm going to try putting this outer sleeve on from the outside of the paracord. I'm going to try wrapping it up with this line that was inside the paracord. It's yellow. I'm not sure if you can see that. Yep. I was going to try fraying this all and turning it into like a, a jig or a little like bushy lure. So Mark's got this paracord, survival paracord. This stuff is neat. How long is it? A uh, hundred feet. hundred feet. Okay. So he's got this hundred foot roll. Okay. As you see, it's. It's got uh, a whole bunch of different little ropes in one. I'll cut a section off for you. Yeah, well. There you go. All right. Okay, so this is what he got. So if you take your this paracord and you rip it apart. Sorry. I don't mean to throw you all over the place. Okay, so you take it, you rip it apart, and you pull it, and it's got all these different little ropes. Now, this yellow one right here, I believe is a 40 pound, is it 40 pound? 40 pound test. 40 pound test line. Braided line. Yep, Bra yep that's braided fish line. Okay, so that's really cool. And then you have, th uh, this one here is the regular paracord, right? This. This one here is the three, yeah, the three strands, and it's got three strands in here. So there's three strands of uh, binding, I guess I can call it. And then you pull out more, and then there's what oh, you got? Oh, there's a whole bunch of that stuff. Yeah, there's seven, I think, strands. There's of seven strands of regular binding. Yeah. Line. But I got to show you the best thing in this yet it's check this out see this red pull that out and this is wax rope tinder rope I tinder think. rope that that's correct yeah you you get a spark on here and this will burn like a candle we already tried it, it just burns nice it's wax it's really neat this is a really good cord did you get that from mark uh, I ordered on Amazon, and the label on it is P.S. Kook. P.S. Kook. Nice. That is really cool. 
I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce that, but that's what I found. And I thought it was really interesting stuff. I think it's like one of the first real things, like everybody uses rope, everybody needs rope, but to put a spin on it like that for survival and outdoors, and when it's already a really useful rope as Absolutely. being paracord. So that's a good brand, that's a good brand. Above buy. and beyond. Now you can get this in a 550, I believe this is 380 paracord. 380, what does that mean? Uh, that that's the pound straight pound line pole. Oh, okay. So you can 380 pound straight line pole. Uh, 550 paracord is 550 pounds. And it just, it would have more uh, more string more string yeah. on the inside. Okay. Uh, yeah, it might have more, but uh, it's definitely stronger. 550 would be stronger. I want to see how far I got. Just kind of wrapping it up there. All right. What do you got, Mark? Well, I got my now drenched lure here. This is a hook with a little bit of a tassel. It kind of oh, yeah, looks yeah, a little yeah. better yeah. in the water. A little but... jiggy thing going on there. Yeah, and I just had a hit, but we'll see if we can actually hook into something and keep it. snagged quite a bit okay so Mark's doing some fishing I'm gonna revamp this camp I got this uh, emergency blanket I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna lay it over the front you know when it was raining easy we had no problems but then it just started pouring and pouring thundering and lightning and then leaks everywhere. So I'm gonna put up our emergency blanket on our roof. Caught ourselves supper. Good job, Mark. <laughs> nice. I was just working on camp, and Mark yells at me and says he's uh, caught one. So we're gonna go check it out. Very cool, dude. Nice job, Mark. Catch another one for me. <laughs> okay, so while Mark does some more fishing for some bass, I'm gonna go up and down the creek and see if I can catch some crayfish. Good job, Mark. Thank you. You, uh, you caught food and... I haven't even seen a crayfish yet. I don't get it. Yesterday, they're all through here. We were passing them up. Then we had that thunderstorm this morning, and now they're gone. Okay, so do they go to deeper water during rain? When it rains and thunders and storms, do they go to deeper water? Huh. That, we do not know, because we don't even see one. It's a raging torrent. It's like it's a complete opposite of whatever this is right now. We're just talking about the river and 
how amazing and beautiful and alive this river is. I'm seeing an eagle just up here flying around. Plenty, plenty of fish, as Mark's proven. Right now, we're walking the shore, we're looking for a leopard frog. Use his bait. Or, or a toad or crayfish. Yeah, yeah. Anything we can find. A little toad. Mm -hmm. In the old bait basket. These seeds, you can roast them and make a chocolate substitute. Chocolate substitute, eh? Yeah. It's just like a really tough nut inside. But I think you can roast these. Mm -hmm. It's a basswood tree. So there's little nuts inside. Pretty sure you can roast those. I think you see this flesh isn't very deep on it. Oh yeah. But I think you can roast those and it's a chocolate substitute. Like nice, yeah. buddy. That's better. Oh, yeah. That's four no, that's not a four pounder. Very yeah. nice. Look at that. That. Mark? It's dinner. Hi, freaking five. <laughs> this here. Is what I caught this baby on. Nice. What'd you a catch? What'd you use? I used a little toad that we caught on the shore. Uh, probably about the size of the top half of your thumb. Yeah, it was just a little guy. Just little guys. Look at that. And I made a change from last time. I decided to buy what's called a circle hook. I don't know if you can see that. You can tell it's a circle hook because the tip, the very tip points back at the shaft of the back of the shaft. And you don't need to set those hooks, so. Uh, which is handy when you don't have a full pole to give a reef with. So I changed it up and went with a circle hook this time. Nice. Very well done. Now he's got four. I think we're good. I think we're good. That is beautiful. All right, buddy. I just need to find a place to hang them. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to tie it to this rope. Okay, so Mark's going to continue fishing and catch us our, our supper and our lunch. Me, I'm going to work on our shelter some more. Last night was brutal sleep. I was so uncomfortable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to harvest up all these ferns you see around here. I'm going to lay them all down on the on the ground and then put our tarp over top, you know, hopefully to bring a little bit more comfort to my night. Okay, so I'm gonna to continue to gather ferns and cover this whole thing with about five, six, maybe seven inches. And uh, Mark's gonna take a break because he already proved himself today. <laughs> awesome, good job, buddy. Sounds good. Mark, what are you creating? Uh, I'm making a wooden spoon for my wife. A wooden spoon? And maybe for our fish head soup for now. Oh, that's really cool. I'm not sure if we have a pot big enough, but that's my start. Yeah. And that it's got a nice really little cool. handle going really here. Oh, cool, yeah. 
So how are you going to bowl that out? Well, I'm going to do a, get a hot ember and I'm going to kind of slowly work it and blow it on here and see how that works. And let out. it burn through the ember. Let it burn the through. ember technique. Yeah, I'll try that. I've never done it. Want to give it a whirl. So. That is really cool. See how our fish is doing. Try this little one right here. Ooh. Cooked? Oh yeah, absolutely it is. Mm -hmm. It's got bones in it though. It's good. good. Absolutely. Nice. It's totally cooked, dude. This one is anyways. Nice. Oh, I'm going to have to take a pass on that for a minute. Okay, well, I'm going to eat. <laughs> awesome day today. Pretty Great. productive for me. Yeah, absolutely. Dan got all his... Uh, Resting in. I slept the day. <laughs> Mark fished. He caught like four fish. We ate those. <clears throat> they were good. Oh yeah. It was actually almost a little bit too much. I don't think we had more. No, we didn't eat. We had more than we could eat. Oh yeah. Absolutely we did. It was good. Fresh bass. Which is the way you want it. Mm -hmm. Did some work on the shelter. I rearranged some shingles on the roof which got mishapped again. But um, the rain is gone now, Yep. so I'm not worried about it. Yeah, it never came back. It was supposed to. It's supposed to be thunderstorms all day today, and it never did, so that's no, all good. No, just this morning, that was good. That's the way we like it. Uh, I put up a hammock. Oh, right. Sorry, buddy. No, it's all right. I put up a hammock because I'm not sleeping on the ground again. That was just too, that was too long of a night for me. Too long. Yeah, it worked out well for me, so I'm going to stick with the same because... I've had a cold night in a hammock too, so I think I'll just stick with what's working for me and nice. uh, sleep on the ground. All right, man. So what you got there? Uh, I just wrapped this here. It's a, I don't know if you can see that. It's a six inch ferro rod that's a half inch diameter. Uh, it's one of my new, new bits of gear. So I just put this, uh, the survival cord I don't know if you saw the other episode. It's a special paracord. You'll have to go back and take a look at that. Uh, I'm not going to go through it again this time. But uh, yeah, take a look. It's really interesting. Uh, this is a six inch ferro rod. I just made it so it had a hole through here. So now I can wear it around my neck. I can add it to my pack. You know, put it around your wrist. Do whatever you need to do to, Absolutely. to not That's lose great. it. And bright orange to mm -hmm. mark it. I know a lot of people, um, they like to do camouflage everything. Everything's green, everything's <laughs> yep. uh, uh, hidden. But if you're doing survival, one of the things you don't want to lose track of, and it would be so easy to lose that with camo rope on it. And same as your knives and your axes and your hatchets. Anything you want to find again. Yeah, I don't you suggest. set it down in dry foliage, it's gone. Yeah. I've well, lost well. knives and it sucked. Yeah. So. And looked in the same three foot by three yeah, foot patch yeah, yeah. over and over and over again and just your eye misses it. It's happened to me uh, a couple times. I've lost some gear because of it. Yep, absolutely. So. Uh, what else did I do? Oh, I oh, made... Yeah, this is cool. I made a little wooden... Well, a little wooden spoon. It's actually kind of tall. It's like shoulder... For Kool-Aid yards. <laughs> shoulder height. So... Yeah, he carved some, this, this spoon out of his little log. It yeah. was... Yeah, a little Not log. big around, it was Broke a log. some big chunks. He carved it all out. Tried to burn the spoon shape. It's not yeah, great. Not it's yet, my though, first right spoon. Yet. It's my first spoon. Absolutely. Gunner. Excellent. So this is our, our episode of Not So Naked and Not Afraid. 